Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Charles, and welcome you guys to another episode of the Dreamers Pro Show, where we cover everything from sports, hot topics, classic debates, entertainment, and we give you guys a fresh perspective on things and how we see them. And today, we have an interesting episode for you guys that you definitely want to stick around for. So make sure you like the video and subscribe to the channel. Now, as y'all know, Charles Barkley is arguably the best analyst, sports analyst on TV. Arguably the best. Charles Barkley is known for saying exactly what he thinks. And I think that is one of the reasons so many people, so he resonates with so many people because he's, you know, he's not up there like saying what somebody told him to say, you know, he's being his genuine self, you know, that. And I think that's something that, um, um, a lot of people enjoy when they watch Charles Barkley on TV or listen to him on radio, uh, or whatever it is, you know, that that's the first thing. The second thing is Charles Barkley is hilarious. He is hilarious. We put up a poll the other day, uh, uh, quite some time ago, excuse me, where we asked who's the funnier personality, Charles Barkley or Shannon Sharp, and those are the two funniest people talking about sports. I mean, those guys are absolutely hilarious. They just have it. They just have it, and because they, you know, uh, Charles Barkley can make people laugh, he keeps them coming back. But sometimes, however, his strong opinions do get him in some sticky situations with some, uh, especially with some uh, NBA players, right, and former and current. NBA players. He has gotten into with gotten into it with DeMarcus Cousins. He did not hide his feelings about DeMarcus Cousins. If you all don't know it, go search it up on YouTube. He has had his back and forth public nasty back and forth with LeBron James. We all know that. He has gone back and forth with Kevin Durant. We know that. And of course, he has had some moments with the Warriors Draymond Green. He has had some moments with him. We all know his famous line that he said about Draymond Green. He calls him Mr. Triple, uh, Mr. Triple Single. For those of you who've never heard Charles Barkley actually say that about Draymond Green, take a quick listen to Charles Barkley basically telling you what he thinks about Draymond Green's basketball game. Take a listen to that. Oh, hey, Shaq, wait, wait, uh, uh, Draymond don't talk as much since he's having that triple single. <laughs> <laughs> what did he average a, a triple single? <laughs> <laughs> so Draymond Green had nine minutes and 44 seconds of this one before being ejected. He had his normal triple single. So you heard what Charles Barkley had to say, right? That's exactly uh, what he thinks about Draymond Green. And there's been some heated back and forth between Charles Barkley and Draymond Green on social media. However, during a recent interview that Draymond Green did, he spoke about his first encounter with Charles Barkley when they had all of that animosity, right? All of those things that Charles Barkley was saying about him. And I was really, really curious to hear what, uh, what Draymond Green was going to say about the first time uh, he met Charles Barkley. But before we get into his comments, this video is brought to you by our sponsor, Aura, who's also the official sponsor of the T-Wolves. Do you know what the fastest growing crime in America is today? It's identity theft. Imagine trying to log into your email only to see that your password has been changed. Then you start getting weird notifications from your bank and credit cards only to find out that all of your personal and sensitive information has been totally compromised. If you think it can happen to you and your family, just know that in 2020, over 49 million Americans were victims to identity theft, costing them a combined $56 billion. That is why we are excited to partner with Aura, who is the sponsor of this video. Aura is the number one identity theft and financial fraud protection. Aura monitors the dark web and alerts you if any of your passwords and accounts have been breached. And funny enough, after using Aura, I discovered some of my credentials were floating around in the dark web, and the app showed me exactly when and where the breach happened. In addition, Aura allows you to set spending alerts and they'll notify you of any suspicious transactions. Aura is four times faster than any of its competitors in alerting you if someone is trying to open a credit card or obtain a loan using your name. And remember this, every 14 seconds, someone becomes a victim of identity fraud. Don't let it happen to you. Now click the link in the description and try Aura for free for two weeks and see if any of you or your family's personal information has been compromised. Start your free trial at aura.com slash dreamers pro. And when you try Aura, by using the link in the description below. Also know that you're supporting this channel. Thank you. So what we want to do is play what, play what Draymond Green had to say about the first time he met Charles Barkley, and then we're going to come back and react to that. So take a listen to that here. I remember we was in, in the off season, you were talking, uh, you were doing, what was that, TN, ESPN, right? TNT. TNT. Mm -hmm. TNT. And you was analyst. And um, I, remember, I remember at one point you was mad as hell as Charles Barkley. Yeah. Pissed at Chuck. You was pissed at Chuck. And then you told me, I met Chuck. You said, Uncle, I love Chuck. I love Chuck. <laughs> Uncle, I met Chuck. I love him. Yeah, because you was mad as hell at Chuck. Listen, when I first went to do TNT, I'm thinking in my head, 
I'm walking on this stage and whatever he on, I'm on that. Like, I'm walking up here, I'm about to make him uncomfortable. Like, and whatever it is, it is. The moment I walked up on the stage, he got out of his chair. Draymond, what's up, man? How you doing? Good to meet you. Welcome to the team, brother. I'm immediately like, uh, thanks, man. I appreciate it, man. <laughs> then I sit down in my chair. So Draymond, what's up, man? How you doing? Like, what's going on? Like, how long are you here? Da da da. He he broke me down so fast. It's like, at that point, that man get up and greet me like that. And then as the show go on, he like tossing me lives. Like, he know I have a certain opinion on something. So he's like, well, such 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 such. Huh, Draymond? And then I can run with my opinion. Like tossing me live. Uh, the show go off, giving me a couple pointers. We finish, we go out to the to the little pub, he go to a drink that night. We had drinks, he's incredible. He walk in there in the pub, everybody in there love him. He know everybody by first name. He walking through the studio, know everybody by first name. Hey, such, 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 hey, such, such, like, everybody by first name. I'm like, yo, this man is incredible. Like, right. if, if at this point, if I don't like him past this, it's something wrong with me. Right. Like, it's no longer him. Like, I had to check myself, like, if I'm gonna have an issue with him past this, it's something wrong with me. Then I must be insecure in my game and the things that he said about my game. I must be really insecure in those things in order for me to keep saying, like, I don't like this dude because he just showed me what type of person he is. So I, 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 I immediately gained a huge... Now, here are my thoughts on what um, Draymond Green had to say. First of all, kudos um, to Draymond for saying that if he continued to have issues with Charles Barkley after meeting him, right, after seeing how he unarmed him with his humor and his, you know, open arms, how, you know, people were reacting to him when they went out to dinner, as he said, uh, shout out to him for saying that if I still had an issue uh, with Charles Barkley, then it means that there's some insecurity in my basketball game that's causing me to feel s this strongly about the things that Charles Barkley is saying about his basketball game. Shout out to Draymond Green for saying that because I thought that was very, very, very honest. Um, um, that was a very honest thing um, for him to say. I think the reason Charles Barkley didn't approach Draymond Green with the with the type of energy that maybe he thought he was going to get or at least the energy he was willing to give Chuck I think the reason was because I don't think Charles Barkley really had an issue with Draymond Green I think Charles was just up there saying what he thought being his usual self cracking jokes but I don't think that he he had any malice towards Draymond Green now if it was Charles Oakley <laughs> There was coming up in that set and him and Charles Barkley were going to have a, you know, um, have a face to face. I think it would have been a totally different thing. Number one, because of the things that Charles Bar Charles Oakley said he would do to Charles Barkley. That's number one. Number two, um, about, about the, you know, the rumors surrounding the two of them getting into physical. So that's a totally, totally different thing. I don't think Charles Barkley views Draymond Green uh, in that way. Right. I don't think I don't think he saw Draymond Green as an adversary. I'm just sure he was like, okay, this is what is what I think, man. Whatever. That's the and the final thing is this: on many occasion, Charles many occasions Charles Barkley has said that he really doesn't have a rooting interest in any of these. Games. He really doesn't care who wins, and he says sometimes it makes him chuckle, no pun intended, uh, that a lot of people feel like somehow he has a rooting interest. Now sometimes. Uh, he does come out and say he's supporting the Phoenix Suns, but that's the team he played with, right? So he does have a rooting interest in that. Sometimes he may want a particular team to lose because some of the stuff that they've been doing, like stuff, some of the stuff he said about the Lakers. But beyond that, I don't think Charles Barkley goes home and cries his eyes out. Excuse me, if the Phoenix Suns lose the game uh, in the playoffs. I don't think it's really, really uh, that deep to him. I just think that he follows the sport. Maybe he supports a particular team, a particular player. But I don't really think, um, you know, I don't really think it's that deep. But what I found um, most interesting about this is what Draymond Green had to say, because I never got a chance to hear Draymond Green take us behind the curtain 
about the first time him and Charles Barkley met. All we saw was them sitting on the set on NBA, what is it, uh, in, in, inside the NBA, or NBA on TNT. That's all we saw, right? We never, you know, saw them like, you know, greeting backstage. We never saw that. So I thought that was quite insightful. So the question to you guys is, what do you think about what Draymond Green had to say about the first time he met uh, Charles Barkley? Whatever you guys think, please leave your thoughts and comments in the comment section, and we catch y'all in the next episode. Peace.